As we begin this video, let me show you a short demonstration and we'll talk through this one. Here I've created the text independently and separate to the image. So as you can see, I can have that coming on screen or off in a similar way to a previous video we did with the cutout text. But of course, if the image and the text is separate, then it does allow the image to be zoomed or animated in any way and also the text too. What I've done here is to simply move the text. But although we are moving it from where we created it, it works because the whole text is in harmony with the colours of the image. In the next example, similar techniques but I'm using now PTE AV Studio techniques to stretch out the text and then finally remove the text from the screen. In this final example I let my enthusiasm run away from me just a little bit creating massive text and then an outline which you can see gradually being painted on and then finally a complete change where the text comes up in a bold colour and the rest of the image drops into black and white. Let's take a look. So here we are in PTE AV Studio and to create the text effects we've just seen in the demo I need to open up my image into Photoshop. Control W will do that. As you can see, not only have I opened up the image into Photoshop, but I've also selected the Type Text tool from the toolbar on the left. I've typed the title that I want to use, and I've adjusted the size and the font style. If we wanted to make a change to the word Sunrise, what we may have done is to go across to the left-hand side, the toolbox, reselect the Type tool, then click into the text and highlight it. But we can do that much quicker now by just going up to the text layer on the right hand side and double clicking. Now once we've made a change to the text, instead of going up to the center top of the screen to hit that little tick, what we can do is maybe even select just the background layer. If I select the background layer, not only do I get that selection, but I also commit the text. Let me just reselect that with a double click. Let's assume once again I've made a small change. If my next stage was to go down to select the effects down at the bottom of the screen, even though I go down and we get the no entry sign when I click, it will commit the text. And in fact, there's loads of tools that will do the same thing. So if I was going to go over to the left hand side, top of the toolbox to select the move tool, once again the text has been committed. Now it's not unusual when we're working on text like this. I've got the move tool selected and I could be moving my text around and while I'm doing that I have second thoughts about the size for example. And I may think about selecting my text tool or going back to my layers but while I've got this tool selected here, even though it's not the text tool, I can just double click and that too will select the word sunrise. Nice little shortcuts which are nice to know I think. So let's make a start on our text. I'm going to reselect my text layer. Holding the control key I'm going to click to make a selection of that text. I can then turn my live text layer off and select my background layer. I don't need to worry about the lock here because I'm going to make a copy using the selection that I've made. Probably the quickest and easiest way to do this in Photoshop is Control J. Now when I hit Control J you'll see a change in the layers on the right hand side but of course the text seems to have disappeared on the picture but that's because we've made a selection of just that part of the picture so when I turn the picture off 
there we can see the text itself and of course if I move the text a little way then of course we would see it Control Z will drop it back into position what we're going to do to make the text appear is to apply some of those effects from down the bottom of the layers palette so moving down to the bottom left I'll select my effects I won't choose anything I'll choose blending options I'll get this on screen up on the left hand side then I'll choose what I'm going to apply to my text As soon as I tick the drop shadow then of course the text does become visible as always we can click alongside any of these options and we can change anything we see fit we can increase the opacity the distance the spread the size of the shadow that's all going to be purely personal I think I'll go up and tick the bevel and emboss now I'm gonna click alongside that this is just a personal view but I think when we get the size of the bevels a little bit too big I think they tend to look a little bit cartoon like and they lose their appeal for me so I do like the settings to be on the low side I find to my eye they just look more appealing here we're losing the outer edge a little bit so we could choose that stroke command if I highlight the stroke we can see we've got three pixels on the inside of the text I'm going to try the outside I think that looks a little sweeter I could of course choose to increase the drop shadow and quite often rather than use the sliders I do favor just over typing so I'm just going to over type those two values just increase them by four and as I say many times all these things are going to be personal anyway now the background image we've already got in our project folder PTE AV studio so what we need to do next is to turn that layer off and save the text as a PNG file to retain the transparent nature of the background so let's do that with file save as it should default to the correct place now I'm being encouraged here to save this as a Photoshop file and I think I've said this before Photoshop recognizes that we're working in layers over on the right hand side and it's given us the opportunity to save this as a layered file you can see I've already got one here when I was doing some pre-planning so on my occasion here I can just overwrite that but you can just choose a name for example and save it and then we can go back in save as and now we can save that PNG file it's always good to save that Photoshop file in case we want to make a quick change later so down to PNG I'll just leave it or I'll call it my title I think we'll click save I'm going to use the medium file size but once it's saved now we can go into PTE AV studio and have a look at it now we can always open up this particular layer into the objects and animation screen we could then select the sunrise text we've just created and we could use keyframes to bring it onto the screen and off when we want to but in actual fact I think it's actually quicker and probably a little bit more flexible to do that with three separate images because every time I double click and bring an image down I'm not tripling the size of my slideshow here because I'm only really using one image so what I'm gonna have here is this image will start my slideshow the text will appear on this image fade out back onto this image then we can move on to whatever we choose next so if I select the middle of the two I can go to my objects and animation screen I'm going to lose the bounding box around the edge here by clicking into this gray area up to the top insert an image that's what I want open the basis of our title is that simple 
Now just for the moment I want to go to the top right and close the objects and animations screen because I want to pose a question that you may be thinking of at the moment. Why didn't I just create my text as a part of the background and save it as a JPEG? So I've got this image and then this image and then I could have a duplicate of my first image to fade the text off. Well I could if my intention was to keep the text exactly where it is but because I've got the title separate to the base image sunrise I do have the opportunity to animate one or the other or in fact both if I felt it necessary. On this occasion if we're going to just leave the text as it is then I would close the objects and animation screen I would be going to my timeline I would very likely have a piece of music here to be able to synchronize these together and I would make some changes I'll have my blank coming up for a couple of seconds then my base image then my title a couple of seconds for the title on screen and then it'll fade off nicely ready for the next slide in the sequence now here I brought you back into the slide list because I was speaking earlier on about maybe animating the text or the background image or in fact both and if we're going to do that we're unlikely to need these three images so I'm going to remove the first one and the third one and we're just going to work on our base image the one that contains the text and we'll bring the text on and off the screen with keyframes. How much time do we need? Well when we start this process we may not be entirely sure. I'll just give myself about 12 seconds I can always adjust it a little bit later. So with the image selected I'm going to go to my objects and animation screen. Now I'm not a great fan of too much animation. I think if we animate the background and we animate the text as well it may be just a step too far but of course these decisions are personal and there are always exceptions to the rule. I'm going to zoom my background image, the one I've called Sunrise. So what I need here is to either copy or clone the keyframe. So with the keyframe selected on the left hand side I'm going to use my Alt and Insert and I'm going to drag that up here and the first thing I'm going to decide is what to do with the image. Well I think I'll zoom it out rather than in which means if I select my first keyframe I can go to my zoom up at the top right either over the zoom X or the zoom Y right click and choose original size that set my image up to the size I actually created it so I wouldn't want to go any bigger than that but I think that's going to be adequate for my needs when I get to this keyframe then I want the image to be back something like that now because I'm making a demonstration I've just remembered that I'm not showing you the grey bar at the right hand end of the timeline here which would generally signify this image fading off screen to the next and the reason we haven't got the grey bar is because I haven't included a next image yet so forgive me for that I'm going to take what's going to be no time for you to remedy that and I'm going to just drop out of the objects and animation screen and just drop a different image to follow from my opening image and the opening title. Now in making that change to add an image after sunrise it's put the grey bar in place but what it's also done it's now moved my keyframe to the 10 second point just before the image fades out and if you remember I set my slide time for 12 seconds but no great problem I can just move my cursor to the right we could have a little test we could put the cursor at this point and press play just to make sure that the zoom out of the base image was not running faster than we really need but what we've got to do now is set up for the sunrise to appear on screen when we want it 
to stay there as long as we need it and then to fade off before the image is removed from the screen. So it may not be a bad idea to select the title and do that next. We're going to need four keyframes for this. So if I select the first keyframe and making sure I've actually selected the title from the bottom right corner, I can use keystrokes here. Alt insert will clone a keyframe and if I do that two more times there I've got all four keyframes that I need. Now I'm going to hold my shift key and click the first and you'll notice they've all been selected and I can move them to wherever I want them because I've got to make some decisions now on where I want the first one to appear. The image is going to take two seconds to appear on screen. How long do I want before the text starts to fade on? Three seconds, maybe four. Well, let's select just one of these. This is our first keyframe. I'm going to use keyframe time here. Let me try for 3000, which is three seconds, which means that the last keyframe to take it off is probably going to be at nine, which is going to give us a second before the image fades away which means we can space this set, these two out by saying well we only really want about a second for the sunrise text to appear so the second keyframe can be somewhere around four you can use keyframe time or just click and drag as I am here and this one would need to be somewhere around eight so at this point sunrise shouldn't be seen so let's go to the opacity I can click and drag on the A and drop that down to zero. At that point we do need it to be visible and at this point we need it to be visible and at this point we want it to be invisible. Now you can either click and drag to the left or right click on the A and choose zero. But what we have there is our animation and we have our text set up. I think what I may do here is close and we'll do a quick little demonstration just using the mini player here. Let me get that to the right size. I'll put my cursor on the black here and I'll press play and we can just watch it as it pans through those three options. So there's the image, for it's zooming as it comes on screen. The text appears, sits there for a few seconds and then fades off and then we're on to our next image. Now of course we may need to vary that once we start to apply music and we're influenced about where and when the text appears and how long the first slide appears on screen. But we've created our opening titles. Now with the spinning round of the screen you can see I brought you back into the objects and animation screen and you may notice the little difference with the keyframes for my title here. And I think what I've done here is pretty typical when we create audio visual. Based on what I saw a few moments ago with that little preview, I've decided to increase the slide duration from the 12 seconds I originally gave to 16 seconds. So from the extreme left hand side of the timeline to the right we now have 16 seconds. The impact of that is going to mean that the zoom out will be marginally slower but that may not be a bad thing. But the keyframes for my title can also be spaced out a little differently and we can think this through as we do it. The background image will take two seconds to fade on screen and the grey bar will tell us that. We're going to see the background image for another three seconds taking us to the five second point. Then from five seconds to six seconds the sunrise title will fade up. From six seconds to ten, just four seconds which I think is adequate, we can see the title and from 10 seconds to 11 it'll fade off but then that leaves us a further 3 seconds to enjoy the image before it starts to be removed 
by the next image in our sequence. But maybe what we can do here is to change the position of the word sunrise. Now we can do that by selecting all of the keyframes together and adjusting the pan Y. Just to lift it up into the lighter area at the top right of the image. So I'm going to select the first of my keyframes, hold the shift key and select the last and all of them are now selected. But of course if the selection remains on the last keyframe, if you look over to the opacity, well the opacity is saying that there's nothing there at all but in fact the opacity is zero. So I really need to bring my cursor back to that position while retaining the selection on these keyframes so I can see the text because I need to see it to go to the pan Y, click and drag over the Y to raise the image. Because now we've got another variation with the animation of the background image but the text moved into the sky but it still works perfectly well because the colors of the text are in perfect harmony with the image it appears over. Now as you can see here by the spinning round of the screen I brought you back into Photoshop and all I've done here is exactly the same as what we did a few moments ago. I've just used a different font style and I've done my cutout from the lighter part of the image rather than sitting across the light and the dark. So all I really need to do here is to turn off my background layer and save this as a PNG file. But what I'd like to do here is something just a little bit different. What I'm going to do here, instead of saving the entire document, I'm going to crop the word sunrise before I save it. So selecting the crop tool, I'm going to click and drag just around that shape. I don't need to be too tight, I think that will do the job. I'll hit the tick on the options bar and all I need to do now is to save that into my project folder as a PNG file. I'll do that and then we can open up PTE AV Studio. So I'm starting a new project here. I've got the image I've dragged down from the file list above and an image to move on to. I've set my slide duration to a calculated guess of 12 seconds. So I'm going to open up my objects and animation screen and click into the gray area to deselect that background image and that yellow green bounding box will disappear. Then I'm going to bring in my title. We will see quite a difference this time. So let's go to add an image. There's my new title. And when I click OK, you can see it looks huge in comparison to the actual size I created it. That's because I've cropped the text and when we open this up in PTE AV Studio, it tries to make our text fit the size of the slideshow we're making. So because my crop here is long and thin, my text has met the sides left and right and of course it has to stop at that point. If my text was tall and slim, then of course it may touch the top and bottom, but not the sides. So what we could do here first of all, is to go to our zoom control, right click over the X or the Y, and we can choose original size. But if I move this up into the sky, you may recall that it's now larger than it looked when it was against the image we actually created it from. Let me explain why that is. The image you're viewing here which I have called Sunrise was actually created at 2560 pixels by 1440. The slideshow size we're working on is 1920 1080. Both of those values or both sets of values are actually 16-9 aspect ratio. So you'll remember in the previous video the background image was restricted just a little bit. I've actually got more space there than I'm currently about to use. And if I selected my sunrise 
and I went to my zoom right click and choose original size now things would look a little more normal but it's not a problem I'll reset my background image and reselect my second title because I can just put my cursor into that zoom X and I can use my down arrow and I can decide now the size of the font that I want to use and where I want to position it. Now to complete this animation I'm going to need three keyframes so I'm going to clone two others alt insert twice and I'll move all three along. I think the first one will have that a couple of seconds in from when the image appears but between about four seconds, five, six, seven, another four seconds, I think, so somewhere around about eight seconds, that's where I want the main animation to occur. And what I want to happen between this keyframe and this keyframe is for the image to be opaque here and also compressed. When I say compressed, I mean I want to change the zoom but only the width. Let's do that first by going up to the chain link and severing it by just clicking. Then if I put my cursor over the X I can just squash the text. I could take it down even further if I wanted to. In other words let's take it down to zero. I think I may even move it over to the left as well. So let me just press the spacebar to run that. I need to click first. That's what I want to happen. And then of course we've got to decide if the text is going to be removed from the screen by more keyframes or whether we're going to allow it to just leave the screen with the next image. If that's the case of course I could have omitted that third keyframe. So maybe we'll tuck that up there out the way. So if I go back to my first keyframe I'm going to need some speed options here. We're starting off with the image opaque so I'm wondering if the option best to choose here would be slow down. So we're panning a little bit, we're certainly zooming a little bit and we're not rotating at all so let's take a look at that, press play All we've really got to decide with animation like this is have we given it enough time and of course as I always say that's going to be affected by the music or soundtrack that you're using. Now as I look at what I've created here I think I would like to use another keyframe or two and if we want to adjust the slide duration while we're in the objects and animation screen if we go to the slide options we can do that in the main tab slide duration I'm going to give this another four seconds as we did before so I can leave that at that point so I still want my text to come up on screen there I may give that just a, a little bit longer about nine seconds but then the next keyframe I think I'll have that because we're not going to need it on screen that long because from that point we're still reading the text so it comes to rest at that point I mean we're all going to choose something slightly different but what do we need between there and when it starts to fade off probably somewhere around 11 seconds so if I put that at the 11 second point then I'm going to need one more alt insert a second or so later and then we may want that zero opacity because it will fade out nicely into that area because the text is exactly the same color. Now my video is becoming a little bit long so I need to bring it to a close and I think we'll speed things up with this last option. As you can see I've already created the text I did say in my demo that I allowed my imagination to run a little bit right. So what I've got here is my image. I could have my text which I've created the same way as we've just created all the other. I could have it coming up with just a drop shadow first. Then I could add the bevel and emboss. Then I could add 
the stroke to it but I also get the opportunity let me just shut those off for the moment if I select another version of this because this is now no longer live text I could bring up my hue and saturation you'll find that in your edit sorry your image menu I'm gonna hit control U I've been using that shortcut so long I've forgotten where the actual command is but all I was going to suggest here is that maybe we can just move the hue a little bit and I created a nice rosy color to the text but because I'm just changing the hue we can still see the shapes within and then I did make the background monochrome now I'm going to quickly do that for you because I'm going to hit Control J to make that change and I'll drag that up underneath because if I'm going to make an image monochrome and I'm working in Photoshop I'm going to use Camera Raw to do it so go to Filter Camera Raw Filter and the reason it's good to use this is because when we remove the saturation if the image doesn't have a really good black and white sparkle we can punch up the clarity the dehaze the blacks we do have good opportunities here to make something that's going to be really strong on screen and okay when I'm done now all we've got to do is a bit of saving but I'm going to do that slightly different I'm going to select my background and hit Control J because what I want to do here is to just select one background layer copy and the first of my sunrise I need to turn these off so that's the effect I want to use first so if I select both of those and right click I can choose to merge those two now I'm going to make another copy of my background and I'll drag that above because I want to amalgamate that with the next text and the next text brings up the bevel and emboss so I can select both of those right click and merge them and I can keep doing this and again I will drop it just below the sunrise so there's the next one with the outline right click and merge layers and finally we can do the same with these two now I would save all of those as JPEGs and we can do that within Photoshop we can just export these as layers so let me quickly do that too file export layers to files browse to where I'm working in my pictures folder in my sunrise folder what do I want to call this well it doesn't really matter I'm going to call it my last title I can choose only visible layers well I've got them turned on so that's correct I do want to save a JPEG I can even choose the quality I want to save click run Photoshop will do the work and it'll only take a few seconds and I'm gonna have all of those images saved for me and there it's telling me it's done so so when we open up these images and drop them into the slide list in PTE AV Studio we may in fact not want to use all of those that we've created but it's nice to have a variety and some choices because I've put them into position in the order I created them so starting off with the original image then we have the one with just the drop shadow then we add the bevel and emboss then we add the stroke line and finally I've got the other variety where I've got a monochrome in the background and that nice warm red color in the foreground so we can experiment with fade times and here you can see this particular image has a six second fade time here and I'm actually using a different one completely let me take you into the slide options I'm using the hour hand and I'm using the default but I've took the thickness of the smoothing line off let me see if I can just quickly demonstrate this to you by looking at this in the mini player 
and you'll see the stroke line appears in an unusual way. It's just another option that we have. As is that nice fade onto the last one. There's actually so many options we could almost carry on forever, but I think both you and I are probably running out of steam about now. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, can I encourage you to subscribe to my channel? And if you hit that notification bell, you'll be informed whenever I put up new content. I'll see you next time.